So this is a book called Surprising Sharks. Now, we all think we know quite a lot about sharks. They're scary and they're big and if you get in the water they might bite your leg off. Um, but actually, there's a lot more to sharks than that. A lot more. There are lots and lots of different kinds. And actually, most of them are pretty small and they're not going to bite your leg off. In fact, do you know, you're more likely to be struck by lightning than you are to be bitten by a shark. In fact, I think you're more likely to be struck by lightning twice or killed by falling office furniture. Anyway, here we go. Surprising sharks. Now, the illustrations here are by James Croft. And James did a fantastic, fantastic job with the illustrations here because I was very bossy. I said, you have to do this and you have to do that. And he put up with me being bossy. And one of the wonderful things he did was to make these beautiful end papers. That's what these... Uh, these bits at the beginning and the end of a picture book are called, they're called end papers. Uh, and actually these start to tell the story of surprising sharks even before you get to any of the words because I bet you, for people who don't know about sharks, and of course I'm sure you know loads, but for people who don't know about sharks, to see that there are so many different kinds is a bit of a surprise, isn't it? Okay, so here we go. So I've just got to show you this picture because it's so fantastic, you all know what that is. It's a fin, and that fin on the first page is designed to make you think boom, 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 Okay? So, imagine you're swimming in the warm blue sea. What's the one word that turns your dream into a nightmare? What's the one word that makes you think of giant man-eating? killer. That word is shark. What's up here? You see these little pink feet floating? Mm, little feet. Tasty. Now, when I read this to groups of four-year-olds, um, I make them do a countdown from this page to the next page because I get them to think. Well, what do you think I get them to think? What's going to happen next? Big shark fin and little tasty feet floating in the water. What's going to happen next? Five, four, three, two, one. Ta da! Well, of course, nothing. Because the shark is a dwarf lantern shark, the smallest kind of shark in the world. It's just about the size of a chocolate bar, not a giant, not a man-eater, and only a killer if you happen to be a shrimp. So the very clever thing that James did with the illustration here was that he made this fin look very big by making it very close and made the feet look very small and tasty by putting them quite far away, when really we were talking about a very tiny little shark, this dwarf lantern shark. You see, most sharks are not at all what you might expect. After all, who would expect a shark to have built-in fairy lights in its tummy, which some sharks do, or to blow up like a party balloon, like a swell shark, or even to lie around on the sea floor like a bit of old carpet. And that's what this kind of shark does. This is a, this is a shark called a wobegong, and they really do like a scrap, look like a scrappy old bit of carpet. And they're so well camouflaged on the sea floor that they just lie there and wait until something comes along and then they move very fast because they've got very big mouths and they open their mouths very fast. And whatever was swimming close, has suddenly disappeared. And some sharks, of course, look like tools out of a monster's DIY kit. I bet you know what these are. This is a hammerhead shark and a saw shark. In fact, sharks come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. There are blue sharks and cookie cutter sharks. There are nurse sharks and angel sharks. And this one is a particular favourite of mine. You see this thing down the bottom here? That's a goblin shark. Look at that. Wow, it looks like a space alien, doesn't it? Isn't that fab? Do 
you know what? Nobody knows anything about goblin sharks, really. So, why don't you go and find out about goblin sharks? Why don't you become a marine biologist and find out exactly what goblin sharks get up to on a Tuesday or a Wednesday or a Friday? How can such different animals all be sharks? Well, if you kind of look at them, you can see that they've got some of the same basic things. They've got the same pattern of fins, they've got the same sort of skin, they've got the same sort of um, jaws and similar teeth. And the other thing about them is they don't really have skeletons. Did you know that? They haven't got hard bones like us. They've got soft bones, which are made of the same sort of stuff as your ear, cartilage. The only hard bit is their jaws the real kind of business end of a shark, the jaws and the teeth. And the other thing about the teeth, of course, they're never without their bite because they've got rows and rows and rows of teeth. So when one tooth falls out, another one moves in to replace it. And there's the inside of the shark with that squidgy skeleton and the hard jaws and teeth. Also, the thing that's similar about sharks is the sharkish way they behave. Sharks are always hungry and they're always on the lookout for their next meal. Some even start killing before they're born. Sand tiger sharks, which have um, live young inside their mum's tummy, they might start off with quite a few young in there, quite a few baby sharks in there, and then maybe just one or two get left because the biggest ones eat the littlest ones. Um, some sharks lay eggs and some give birth to live young, but all baby sharks are just like their parents with teeth and the ability to hunt right from the start. Shark senses are fine-tuned, ready for the tiniest hint that might mean food. To a hungry shark, the faintest trail of clues is as clear as a restaurant sign. And they have all sorts of amazing ways of doing that. They've got a fantastic sense of smell. They have eyes that are really, really fabulous at seeing movement, picking up the slightest movement. And, and one sense that they have that we don't have is that they have a they have the ability to sense electrical signals. Now, you've got electricity in your body. All living things have got electricity inside them. It's how your brain sends messages to your muscles and how the rest of your body sends messages back to your brain. So all living things have that el electricity in their bodies. And sharks have the ability to sense that electricity. They have little tiny little pores filled with clear jelly, which have got the most amazing name. They're called, wait for it, this is such a great name. They're called Ampulli of Lorenzini. Isn't that marvellous? Okay, so the Ampulli of Lorenzini are what sharks use to sense electricity. And that means even if they can't smell their prey, even if they can't see it, they can feel it. They can feel the electricity in its nerves so they know exactly where and when to bite. And when at last they get close enough for the kill, they can feel the crackle of their prey's living nerves so they can bite in just the right place, no matter what the prey, whether it's plankton or people. Oh yes, it's true. Some sharks do kill people but only about six of us every year, which when you consider how many people there are jumping in the sea and diving and fishing and all of that, it's not very many. This is a picture of a great white. Look at that. And this is a picture, I didn't show you this. This is a basking shark. Okay, so basking sharks, if you live in the UK, you can see these off the coast of Devon and Cornwall and sometimes West Wales in the summertime. They swim around with their mouths wide open the whole time and what they're doing is filtering plankton, tiny, tiny little fragments of food like the kind of peas in soup almost. 
um, and that's and that's what they eat so they fuel that massive body on those tiny tiny little fragments of, of, of life and if you live near Cardiff and when everything is open again go into Cardiff Museum and go into the natural history bit because they've got the most fantastic 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 basking shark stuffed basking shark in, shark in there and you will be amazed how big its mouth is but they of course can't kill human beings can't eat humans they haven't got the right sort of teeth and they haven't got the right sort of throat to swallow you but of course something like a great white or a tiger shark or a bullhead shark those are the ones or hammerheads actually um have been known sometimes to attack and kill people because as far as they're concerned we might be a meal you never know always worth having a try but do you know what do you know how many sharks people kill every year can you guess it's a hundred million probably now closer to twice that and they get turned into all sorts of things they get turned into fish food and fertilizer they get turned into fish and chips they get turned into leather they get turned into soup all sorts of ways that we use sharks and we take them from the seas and that's really like taking the lions and the cheetahs off the african plains or taking the tiger out of the indian jungle or taking the peregrines out of the skies here they're predators, they're hunters, they're a really, really important part of food chains in the ocean. And without them, everything is out of balance. So poor old sharks, 100 million or 200 million of those killed by us every year. So if you were a shark swimming in the warm blue ocean, the last word you'd want to hear would be human, wouldn't it? Just change your mind about sharks, folks. They're wonderful, fantastic, amazing creatures that have been around on this planet for a lot, lot longer than we have. Have a good day.